Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to New Testament Christian Church on a beautiful Sunday morning. It looks like it's going to be a great day. Plenty of sunshine and go out. And Yesterday was a beautiful day. We thoroughly enjoyed it getting out and about. And uh, I pray that you have come with your great expectations this yes. day to come into the presence of the Lord. And again, we say welcome. Why don't we just stand and raise our hands and lift them up and worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we love you. We magnify you and adore you. And we invite you into this service. We give you all the glory. We praise you. We adore you. And we're excited to sing praises and worship unto our God. And the church said, Amen. 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 Okay, amen. Help me sing that song, Blessed is Church. This Blessed is Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Salvation, purchase of God. His spirit washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. My Savior all the day. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on the sun. Angels descending. Bring from above. Whispers of love. Everybody, this is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Day long, perfect submission. All is at rest. I am my savior now, happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his good. story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long. Why don't you raise your hands and worship him? Jesus, we love you. We adore you. We magnify you. We bless your precious, wonderful name. And almighty oh, God, we ask that you bless your people this day. God, let us not leave this church the same, Father. And we pray if there's one that needs salvation that they will receive the precious blood of Jesus Christ and receive you as your Lord and Savior. 
Amen, amen. Amen. Help me sing that song. I got joy unspeakable. I have found his grace is all come. He supplies every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free and free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy. right now. Amen. I'm talking about, see, that's the thing. I, I was, I'm reading a book and, and God is inspiring me to uh, uh, really educate myself on some things. But in this book, it talks about how that the church has become so worldly in our behavior that we expect the church to be like the world. We expect to come to church and be entertained. We come to church with an expectation that we're going to have musicians, we're going to have this, that, and the other. But how many know that we are the musicians in God's house? Amen. I mean, he says we ought to come to praise him. Yes, amen. We, I mean, we didn't come here. I didn't come with an expectation that I was going to be entertained. I came to entertain God. All right. I really came to worship him. Now, if we come with that attitude that I'm here to worship God, then we start really looking at the words and say, wait a minute. I have found a grace, his grace, and it is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, yes. I am free. Yes, free indeed. Now when you say, it is joy, you understand, I'm not just mimicking words. I'm not just singing a song, but I'm experiencing the real joy of the Lord. So, I, I, you know, I, as I was reading the book and as I've just been praying, God's been saying, what are you guys doing? I didn't come here for entertainment. I didn't come here to, 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 to hear great philosophies from on high. I came to meet God. I came to be stirred and challenged in my soul. And if you come with that attitude, then you'll begin to realize this 
is what I'm really longing for. Well, I, I really don't need the entertainment of the world. I don't need, a, uh, I don't need, I don't need a, 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 he said a, a DJ or a MC up here pumping me up. Come on, sing, get in and what? No, you really need the Holy Spirit to touch your heart. God is able to do those things if we only come with that attitude. Why don't we just raise our hands even right now. Father, help us, Lord God, to realize, Lord, that we're not of the world. God, the world may have tried to creep in, oh God, but Lord, I want more of you, God. I want more of your love, more of your presence, God. I don't want to be like the world. I don't need an attack. Amen. I need a touch from on high. I don't need to just hear a song being sung, but I need a song to come from my heart, a song that will enter the ears of our heavenly Father and realize that I want to praise him. I want to give glory unto him, God. Help us, Lord, to change our attitudes even this morning that God God, we might give you the glory and the honor and all the praise for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. The song says, one day when heaven was filled with his glory. Can we sing that song one day? That's the name of it, right, Sister Hicks? One day? No. The name of it is? Wait a minute. Glory. Glorious day. Amen. Amen. I said that was the special. This is what I want to sing is worship. No fighting. Okay. All right. Sister, Sister Tensio, you are right. Please, Reverend Tensio. I'm going down. Going down. It's hot in here. Anybody else excited for God? I mean, seriously, God's been good to us. He's watched over us. I mean, look, Everett's here three weeks. Everett, I told you now, don't play with my emotions. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look out there. Wait, hey, sister. Chris, what are you doing here? Where's Everett? <laughs> he seems to be having a good time. Is God be been good to you, brother? Yeah. Amen. You know, uh, it's a reality. When you really accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you begin to realize this is what I've been looking for. This is what, see, he's, he's had a taste of religion. Now I want him to have a taste of a relationship with God. We've all experienced it's religion, and religion doesn't do anything for anybody. It, it leads you into a miserable state. It leads you to a, a, a sense of unfulfillment. But God wants to have a relationship with you. The song says, One day when heaven was filled with his praises, One day when heaven was filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he word became flesh and stayed life from among us his glory revealed Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. Oh, glorious day. Let's sing verse one one more time. Hallelujah. 
One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever, one day for Yes, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. It's coming, amen. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing my sins, my Redeemer is He. Hands that heal nations, stretched out on a tree, and took the nails for me. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. And rising, He justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. This day right here is a sweet day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now he's ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. Rising again, living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Come on now. And rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. Oh, glorious day. Listen to this. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glories will shine. Wonderful day my beloved one is bringing. My Savior Jesus is mine. Let me hear you. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified. trumpet will sound with his coming one day the skies with his glory will shine wonderful one that you know, my loved one is bringing my savior jesus is mine sing softly living he loves me dying he saved me he saved me and he carried my sins he carried him to that pit of hell, but it couldn't hold him. He got up, and he freed me. He wants to free you, too. That glorious day is coming. Yes, God, hallelujah. We praise you even right now, God, for your mercy. 
Thank you, Father, for the reality of who you are and what you're trying to accomplish in each of our lives. Help us each, oh God, to recognize just how wonderful, how beautiful you are in our lives. And God will be faithful and sure to give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. Hey, look at your neighbor and wave. Tell him God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen and amen. I just want to say welcome to the friendliest church in Albuquerque. We're just a group of men and women who love the Lord, and we are not ashamed to tell the world about it. We want the world to know that God is real. And, and the things that uh, we've allowed to creep in, the things that we've allowed to take the place of God, they just cannot satisfy. Trust me, the world has tried all kinds of things and nothing can replace the love of our Savior. Nothing, no, I mean, no, no doctor, no drug, no alcohol, nothing can replace. You know, the world tried everything. They've even or er er erected false gods in their lives, but they just don't do. Nothing saves like Jesus. The song says, to the utmost, Jesus saved. The word of God says he, he's able to save to the utmost. That's what we need in our lives, and that's what we preach and teach, and this is how we uh, uh, strive to live our lives, that we live the word of God. Amen. Have we attained? No. We're sharing with, with Deuce that uh, it's a process, but day by day, I'm getting stronger in God. Day by day, you are getting stronger in God. Amen. You know what? Each day we're getting closer to that day when he parts the skies and steps out and the trump sounds. And, and we got to be ready, brothers and sisters. And none of us are perfect, but all of us are being perfected. Amen. God is working on us. So keep praying one for another. I got to take this jacket off. I'm going to lose consciousness. It's going down. It's really warm. But I want everybody to be comfortable. It's actually a pretty warm day today outside, correct? Yes, amen, amen. So be mindful of our schedule. We'll be back tonight, 6.30, our Sunday evening service. We have a midweek service on Wednesdays. What do you do for a midweek service? Come and recharge. Come and get excited again for God and, and realize that there's so much more to God than just the Sunday morning experience. He's a reality and he should be in every aspect of your life. And he wants to be if you allow him to. God is a perfect gentleman. He's not going to barge into your life. He's not going to try to overtake you. Some people say, well, I want God to come and hit me over the head, uh, make me a, a robot. Praise the Lord. God is good. Raise my hands because it's time to... No, no. God wants you to do it because you love him. Because you really... It comes from your heart. So I challenge you. Come and be a part of the midweek service. It will do you good. It, you'll begin to say, wow. I thought it was just a Sunday morning thing. But it's good every day. God's good every day. And then Bible study. We're, we're still in the book of Romans. But I believe we're going to go into 1 Peter next. Now, uh, Brother Deuce, I, I pick on him a lot because he's, you know, when you, when you hang around a pastor, you get called on, right, JP? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> when I get to see your face, when I get to know your name, I'm going to pick on you because I love you and you're, you're a part of my heart. But uh, he, he was saying, I love that book. I read that book. I know this book. And so that's what we're preaching out of tonight. But God laid it on my heart. That's what I want to go to in Bible study uh, in a couple of weeks when we finish the book of Romans. Say, well, what's so exciting about it? Why don't you come and experience it? Let God show you the, the reality. And our Bible study is, is kind of different. Not saying that we're special. I know I'm special, but no. But it's different in that we get to expose the word of God and ask questions. Share experience, how God has affected us by these verses. And it's really a sweet experience that I can't explain to you. You just have to come and experience it. For yourself. Come and be a part of Bible study. Saturdays at 6 30. It lasts about 30 minutes. Sometimes we get a little excited and it runs into 40 minutes. But can't you give God 30, 40 minutes on a Saturday evening? You'll get back home by 7 30, promise, okay? All right. So come and be a part. 
At this time, we're going to wait upon you to receive your tithe and offerings. You give as giving unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you for your giving. Amen. Amen. Reverend Tensio, would you pray for the offering this morning? And uh, Ken and Dolores, I have your offering. Sister Hicks got slick this time. She put her offering on the piano. She always catches Reverend Atencio after he seals the envelope. But it's something, something about you want to be able to give to God. Amen. And you think, I, I don't have a lot of money. God's not looking for the money. He's looking for the heart. The desire to just want to be a blessing. Amen. Sister Hicks and I are going to try to sing this song. Again, it's not a performance. We're worshiping God. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great. Hallelujah. And time is in his hand. Beginning in the end. Yes. Beginning in the end. The God hit three and one. Father, Spirit, and Son. The Lion. He 
truly is great and greatly to be praised. When you think about how awesome he is, how wonderful he is, how his love is so merciful, how his grace is always revealed to us, brothers and sisters, it should humble you. It should bring you to your knees and you begin to realize and cry out, he is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy of all the glory and all the honor. We love you, Lord, and ask you to have your way in this and every service. In that mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone say amen. Amen, amen and amen. God's been good to us. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to bring your Bibles because it's really good. That you can just go and see as I'm breaking the bread of life. I'm reading out of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. Give you a second to turn to it. Give me a second to dry off. <laughs> Beginning to read in verse 3. If I didn't say it, I want to make sure I do. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your giving. Because you give, the house of God is open. Because you give, the, the word of God goes forth. And men and women are have the opportunity to have the gospel preached to them. Amen? Beginning to read at verse 3. The apostle Peter writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though ye, have, ye see him not, yet believing, Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's a powerful passage right there. The salvation of our souls. That's shouting music right there, amen? For text, I'm using verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, he says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice. Though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. I got to read it again. He said, we greatly rejoice, even though for a season, if need be, we're going through some things. But it's worth it all, amen? Amen. This morning, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message, rejoicing anyhow. Rejoicing in, in spite of everything that's going on, I still have a reason to rejoice in my Lord. Reverend Atticio, would you stand and pray, please? Here in our Bible reading, the Apostle Peter, he's addressing some people. In verse 1, he says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethlehem, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of blood of Jesus Christ. Grace! unto you, and peace be multiplied. 
He's literally writing to everybody. He wants everybody to know the goodness of God. They were strangers. You know what? All of us were strangers to God at one time. But thank God for his mercy. He reached out to us. These were ascribed to their salvation, to the electing love of the Father. God chose to save us. Not of good that we have done. Not of anything that we have, we have earned. We, we have not attained this because of our good behavior. In fact, it's in spite of our lack of good behavior. It's in spite of the fact that we were not fit, yet God loved us. God, he really, he sent us his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, he made a way that we might be redeemed. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. What does that mean? To make us holy. To make us right. To come and clean up our hearts, clean up our thoughts, and give us a better way of living. We need a better way of living, amen? We can't do it without God, and, and that's the job of the Holy Spirit. To give glory to God in three persons, in whose names we have been baptized. Hope. In this world, it really, uh, sometimes people put their hope in the world. But the word of God already tells us this world is going to pass away. God's going to give us a new earth. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So why are you hoping in something that you already know is not going to stand? Why are you putting your, your, you're stacking all your marbles in this one bag and this bag is going to burn? He said the second time it won't be water, but it's going to be fire next time. Everything that is not of God is going to burn up. That's why he said some people build of uh, silver and gold and others build of hay and stubble and wood. and Those things are going to perish. The gold is going to be purified. The silver is going to be purified. Those things may remain, but I'd rather put my hope and trust in God. Amen. I don't want to trust in the things of this world. We ought to realize that God, he loves us. Psalm 86 and 5 reads, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. God is looking for an excuse to save your soul. To deliver you out of darkness. To give you peace. Come on, to give you victory. That you could rejoice even in the midst of your battles. Even in the midst of your struggles, your difficult. In the midst of COVID, we can rejoice. No, Pastor, nobody's rejoicing in the midst of COVID. Rejoicing in the midst of COVID, you might get sick. We're going to get sick anyway. <laughs> the whole nation got sick. Omicron, I don't know, it's, like you said, it sounded like a transformer or something, but that Omicron came around and made everybody sick. Did God lose any power? Amen. He's still God. So if he's still God, I'm going to praise him. They said, well, uh, they, they were actually were going to try to mandate no singing in church. You done lost your mind. God's been good to me. That guy said, if you won't let me sing in your church, hold my mule. I'm going to sing right here. <laughs> I got to praise him. He's been good to me. Rejoicing anyhow. Say, I want to read it again. He said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethnia. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God the fa and, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved 
in your bank account. That's not good? Reserved in your, your, your secret hiding space in, in your mattress, right? That's where you keep your money, right? I, I keep my, no. He said it's reserved in heaven. You know what? You know, I'm glad it's in heaven. He says, because thieves can't enter and rob. No, nothing can corrode it. Nothing can get to it. Our, our treasures are safe because they're with God in heaven. Amen? Here the apostle Peter, he wrote this letter to encourage believers who would face all kinds of trials and persecutions under their emperor Nero. During most of the first century, Christians were hunted down and killed throughout the Roman Empire. They could, however, expect social. They were not hunted and killed down, okay? They, but they were uh, shunned. Because the Jews said, we're not like them. They, they were, uh, they, people were associating Christians with Jews. And the Jews were like, no, no, we're not. You know, they're, they're, they're offspring. They're not a part of us. So they were shunned by everybody. But Jesus was telling them, this is the true religion. This is the truth. This is what it was really meant to be. You really ought to be like Christ. The book of Acts says they began to call them Christians because they began to act like Christ. No longer Jews, but now Christ-like. I want to be Christ-like, amen? Amen. They were persecuted by three main sources, the Romans, the Jews, and listen to this, their own families. Your own family. I raised you better than that. Remember that family when, when they, their son was healed? And they came and they said, tell us. Is that your son? And because they wanted to hold their place in the synagogue, they didn't want to be shunned. They didn't want to be an outcast. They said, oh, he's of age. Ask him. No, that is my son. And I don't know how, but Jesus saved him. And he healed him. And he's walking, he's blind, he was blind, and now he can see. I don't know how that happened, but I thank God that it did. I don't have anything to be ashamed of. I'm a Christian. And I'm proud to tell the world about it. James Brown says, say it loud. I'm black and I don't have a choice. <laughs> But I'm a Christian, and I choose to be. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. The legal status of Christians in Roman Empire was unclear. Many Romans still thought of Christians as members of a Jewish sect. Because the Jewish religion was legal, they considered Christianity legal also as long as long as Christians completed the empire's laws, as long as they complied with what they wanted, as long as they didn't uh, stir up any trouble. However, they became a target of persecution when they refused to worship the emperor as a god. You know, there are some people that they said they had, uh, what's that Trump, ma uh, Trump mania when they lost their mind? I can't remember that they had a, a disease they called it. When they, they were just so crazy about Trump. They either hated him or they loved him. And there's still some people today that Trump is our God. We worship. We buy. You done lost your mind. There is a God. And he alone is worthy of our praise. I'm not finding fault with anybody, but I'm saying everybody has a place. They cannot take the place of God. And you know, 
when they then begin to think that they have, God is able to put them in their rightful place. That's why we got to be careful. Don't lift up your wife as an idol in your life. What do you worship? I worship my wife. God says, I'm a jealous God. And I'll have no gods before me. So if you resurrect somebody as a God in your life, you're putting a death sentence on them. Mm. I'm talking about rejoicing anyhow. This doesn't sound like rejoicing, Pastor. Well, I'm just, we got to get through some stuff, right? <laughs> Peter, who was also called Simon and Cephas, was one of the 12 disciples chosen by Jesus. And James and John and was part of the inner group that Jesus singled out for special training and fellowship. And Peter was the one first recognized Jesus as the Messiah. Remember, he said, who do men say that I am? And everybody had their opinions. Peter said, thou art the son of God, the Christ. And Jesus pointed out, you didn't just get that from anybody. My father gave you that special insight. Aren't you grateful that God gives you the knowledge of who he is? Though the world may have doubts, you don't have any doubts about who Jesus is. <laughs> the song says, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. They ought to know. The letter address was uh, to God's chosen people. Did you realize that you were God's chosen people? That's, I mean, that, that really is exciting. God chose me. He could have picked anybody. He chose this knucklehead and cleaned me up for his glory to make me something, not that I could walk around and brag and say, look what I've become, but because of who he is, he wanted to show the world what he could do with a surrendered vessel. When you surrender to God, you give yourself to him, God can mold you into the image that the world would look to say, is that Deuce? I know him. No way. Yes way, because God is able. All we have to do is come to him. When they became Christians, they didn't give up their Jewish following. They didn't give up their Jewish heritage. You didn't give up your citizenship. You're still a U.S. citizen. But now, you're a child of God also. I'm proud to be an American. I do. I want our nation to awaken from this slumber. I want them to awaken and realize there is a God in heaven, and he's the one that we ought to listen to. That's why he told us to pray for our nation. He says that if we would turn from our evil and wicked ways, that God would heal here from heaven and heal our land. Nevertheless, I'm a child of the king. So God is not looking to make you into a robot, a Christian robot. Praise the Lord, pastor said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, amen, amen, pastor said, say amen. He wants you to still be you, but a new you. One that realizes I'm more than just what the world saw me be. I'm more than what I used to be. I'm no longer that dead, uh, uh, dying soul, that, uh, that wretch that I used to be. But now God has given me a new life. And now there's a new man, a new woman coming out of me. And it's coming out in a way that glorifies God. These verses mention... The Trinity of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm picking on Deuce again. Because sometimes people don't understand what's, why is it so important that we acknowledge the Trinity. Well, there are false religions that believe that God is just one. Even in that song we just sang, you got to be careful. It says, the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, and Son. As, as if to say that there's only one person. But that's not what the word of God teaches. That's not what we believe as Christians, as a New Testament Christian. 
We believe the Bible. We take God's word literally. He says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He didn't say he made one person and gave them three names. That's not what he said. But there are some teachers that would teach that. That is not the word of God. Did you hear what I said? And it's important that we understand this because when the world tries to deceive you, when they deviate, see, it only takes a little bit of deviation to cause doubt. And that doubt then begins to make you to lack in the faith that you ought to have in God. I want to remove the doubt. There are three. The first is God the Father. The second is God the Son, Jesus Christ. And third is God the Holy Spirit. That's God living in us. Oh, hallelujah. The Father chose us before we chose him. You can find that in Ephesians 1 and 4. Jesus Christ, the Son, died for us, us while we were still sinners. Well, where do you find that? Romans chapter 5. Read 6 through 10. And the Holy Spirit brings us the benefits of salvation and sets us apart. Listen, sanctifies us, makes us holy for God's service. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13. I know they're not up on the screen. <gasps> it's not up on the screen. It's a challenge for you. If you really want it, read it. Look it up. Because I want you to know the truth. So that nobody can tell you a lie and you not be, not, you, I don't want you to become confused. Oh, well, pastor never taught us that because it's not true. The term here, born again, refers to a spiritual birth, a regeneration. God wants us to be born again. Just like he told that, that Pharisee, that teacher that came to him by night and said, I know that you're a man come from God. Because nobody teaches like you do. And Jesus told him, hey, marvel not. You must be born again. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor. I've been coming to this church for a long time. I've never been born again. Why not? What are you waiting for? This is what church is really all about, that you understand that God wants you to have a new life, a new heart, a new mind, a new way of seeing, a new way of uh, realizing. Then you'll come to church with that other expectation, no longer expecting to be entertained. You'll come saying, I come to worship God. I come to bring my praises to him. What's the song we're singing? I don't know that song, but I'll hum along. I'll make some noise. Nobody will have to get behind you and say, come on, sing. Get in. Come get excited. Because it's already in there. Because you've been born again. Born of the spirit. He says, come on, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And you have a spirit man in you that's crying to come out. That wants to connect with his heavenly father. And unless you've been born again, you don't know this. You're still dead in your trespasses and sins. But God has made a way for us to be born again. John chapter 3, verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. I'm preaching about rejoicing anyhow. So he said, Peter's continuing, he said, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. 
See, the Jews that look forward to their promise, their inheritance in the promised land of Canaan. And although the nation received the right of the inheritance, eventually they defiled their faith through the influence of foreign nations. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we sometimes allow the world to defile our relationship with God, even in the house of God. We come to the house of God with an expectation like we're going to a theater. Like we're going to a concert. That music better be just right. I want the light show to be choo, 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 choo. Let a little smoke come up over here. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's God? Don't you know that's the world? And when the world creeps in, then, then the next time you come, you say, well, I expect to see some fireworks next time. The smoke wasn't enough. Come on, Pastor. I, I want to hear some exposure. Boom! I want to feel rumbles in the seats. All those theatrics, but no God. All that carrying on, all that noise, all that racket. And God is like, he's not pleased. Yeah. I've been to a lot of our churches around the country. Sometimes even around the world. I've been in churches where they've had choirs of 30 members and they get up and they sing with all their heart. And I'm telling about a real worship service. Praise God for it. It's awesome. I've been to churches where there's one man, a, 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 a symbol, a, a, not a symbol, a, a, what's the thing? The little rattle thing. Tambourine. He beats that. Some, some places they can beat the tambourine like drums. And I'm like, wow. And they have the best worship service. Why? They don't have any instruments. They don't have a choir. They have a heart and a love for God. That's what God is looking for. He, the choir is awesome if you have it. The musicians are wonderful. They add to the worship, but it comes from a heart. God is looking for true worship. He's not looking for a performance. He's not looking for a show. He's not looking for a, a, a chore choreographed moves. Come on, everybody. Then we look good. <laughs> you, can, you can get my signature afterwards. God's not glorified in that. He wants us to wake up. Though the nation had received their, the right of inheritance, they were defiled by the influences of the nations. People's sins had caused the promise to only become a fading memory. They got what they wanted, and they didn't even appreciate it anymore. People get what they want. They find and that church that'll make them feel good, that feel good church where they can hear the songs that they want to sing. They're not necessarily glorifying God, but the soloist gets to go, ah! Everybody says, oh, she can really sing. Whoa, that was beautiful. God is sitting there shaking his head. She wasn't glorifying me. She wasn't trying to, she was trying to please you. Pastor Hicks isn't going to sing on key. Most of the time he doesn't know what the key is anyway. If I hurt your ears, I'm sorry. Because when I sing, God in heaven is like, that's my son. He's ripping up another one. <laughs> but his heart is pure. His intentions are that he might glorify me. He's not trying to impress anybody else. 
You shouldn't come here trying to impress anybody. With, I can sing the loudest. Do you know what the words? No. Do you know what the song really means? No. I just can sing the loudest. Look at me. God said, that's what, that's what these people had done. They had become worldly. And so they didn't appreciate it. Do you need encouragement? See, Peter's words here are for joy and hope in times of trouble. He bases his confidence on what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Do you realize what God did when he gave us Jesus Christ? He set us free. No longer bound to sin. No longer do we have to go by the way of the alcohol and the addictions and the, the drugs and, and living a lifestyle that we, we, we're scared for our wives to see our cell phones. We don't want our boss to know what we do when we leave work. We don't want our friends to find out that our marriages are ripped apart. and they, they don't, We don't want them to know what's really going on in our lives. That's not living. We live with wonderful expectation of eternal life, knowing that this is not our home. We're just on a journey through this place. And in this journey, we ought to take the time to learn more about him. About what he's trying to accomplish in and through our lives. Because believe it or not, God didn't save Maria so Maria could be saved to just be saved unto herself. But he wants her to be a light. And that her light will shine that others might be saved. That others might come to her and say, how do you have that joy all the time? Come on, is corona not affecting you? Yes, it's affecting all of us. But I got a God who's greater. Let me tell you about him. So he sings that song, let me tell you about my Jesus. He raised the sick. No, he, ra he healed the sick and he raised the dead. <laughs> I told you I might not know the songs, but I know how to praise them. Amen. <laughs> See, our hope is not only for the future, but eternal life begins when we trust in Jesus Christ and we join in God's family. You know what? There's no other family I'd want to be in than the family of God. The family of God is a sweet thing. And we were talking about last night in Bible study. Yes, Bible study, Saturday, 6.30. We were talking about how that we all can be different and still be in the same family. We don't have to be robots. Pastor said we must do this. No. Chris loves her dogs. Where's Sister Lucille? Sister Lucille loves her dogs and her cats. <laughs> she has cats too? Calm down, calm down. All right. <laughs> Pastor Hicks says, praise God, she loves her cats. And her dogs. And keep them. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not a cat person. I'm not a dog person. I think I want a goldfish, but I probably would kill it. So I'm just leaving the goldfish alone too. But that's not going to make me and Chris not be able to have fellowship. Well, the word of God says, thou shalt not have a dog. No, it doesn't. Stop making up junk. So we can get along. We can get along, though we're different. Ain't God good? The family of God is that, that we can have fellowship. We can love each other and still be different. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Chris is white. I know, I know. I was surprised too, Chris. They told me I was black. I was like, oh, how did that happen? You telling me that black people and white people can get along? In Christ, we can. 
In the world, we may not be able to. In the world, we might, we might be arch enemy. But the devil is a liar. That's my sister in Christ. Oh, you're a sellout. No, I got saved. And now I know the truth. I'm talking about rejoicing anyhow. See, God's family is it, a sweet thing, and it's a sweet thing to be a part of because then you begin to realize, I'm not by myself. Sometimes the devil tells you that you're the only one. You're the only one going through this battle. You're the only one having this struggle, and you begin to say, woe is me. But God says that's not true. God will help us to remain true in our faith through whatever difficulties we must face because the last day, is the judgment's day. That day is coming. Amen. Revelation 20, verse 11 says, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was none found, no, there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, great and small, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead, were, the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books, according to their works. The sea gave up their dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you think about this. No matter what trials or persecutions we may face, our souls cannot be harmed if we've accepted the gift of Jesus Christ as our salvation. We don't have to worry about this second death because we've been saved by Jesus Christ. That's something to say hallelujah about. <laughs> That's something to get excited about. I'm preaching about rejoicing anyhow. He said, wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye loved, and whom though ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. This is what it's all about. Rejoicing anyhow in the midst of the battles, in the midst of the struggles, because you know in the end it's going to be worth it all. Anybody had coronavirus? I had. I had it a couple times. Anybody enjoy it? Anybody need a special one? Another one? Give me another. It was cool. I want to do it. None of us liked it. I told you. At one point, I had decided, all right, God, I'm ready to go. I was ready to go. I was like, God, take me. But do me a favor. Take my wife, too. I don't want her to have to go through misery, you know. <laughs> and my wife's thinking, hey, 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 hey. I ain't with that fool. He's lost his. <laughs> he want to go take him. I still got grandbabies. <laughs> Come on, we had some rough times. But God has always been faithful. Why are the Christians under so much persecution? You ever wondered why? Because we have the truth. Now, some people mess with Buddhists. Sometimes they mess with uh, the Muslims. But mostly, everybody hates Christians. Everybody has something negative to say. In their day, they were... They refused to worship the emperor as God, and thus they were viewed as atheists or traitors. They refused to worship in the pagan temples, so their business and money-making enterprises all suffered. 
They didn't support the Roman ideals of self and power and conquest. And the Romans scorned the uh, Christian ideal of self-sacrificing service. They didn't like that Christians were willing to suffer wrong. They wanted everybody to have that same idea, conquer, conquest. We should be able to come and dominate. We should come in here and annihilate anybody that's not like us. But Christians say live and let live. Because we came to lift up Jesus. And everybody ought to have a chance to know who Jesus is. Paul mentions trial and suffering several times in this letter, and he wants us to understand that it's going to come. We can testify, right? Hands, feet, everything in the air. They come. But Jesus already told us, in this world, we're going to have tribulations. But he said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Nothing is going to come over you that's going to overtake you that God is not able to control. Amen? Amen? So we must accept the trial as a part of our refining process that burns away the chaff, that, that helps us to, to make us fall on our knees and cry out to him. Anybody ever had an older uncle or cousin that could beat you every time? I had an uncle. He was two years older than me. It was me, my uncle, and my cousin. We were raised together. My uncle was 12. My cousin was 11. I was 10. So you know who always ends up on the bottom, right? <laughs> and so my uncle would get you into one of those arm bar locks or somewhere where you bent over and say, Say, uncle! What you going to say? Uncle, because I want my arm back. <laughs> uncle! But then I got saved. The devil comes and he tries to pin you in a position. He tries to get you in a compromised position. Say, Uncle. Uh uh. I can say, Jesus. And the devil has to flee. I challenge you. The next time you find yourself in an ugly situation, the next time you find yourself with a back against the wall, your arm is being cranked, and the enemy's trying to get you to give up on God, call on the name of Jesus. He says, I've already defeated the world. There's nothing he can do that God can't counter. You think about it, as gold is heated and the impurities float to the top so that the, the jeweler can skim off those impurities. God is skimming off the impurities from our hearts. And sometimes we go through some rough times. Not all the time do we pass. So we find ourselves in that same situation again. How are you going to do this time? Sometimes we like to use that escape button. He said in every situation there's a way of escape. See, God, I can't handle this. He said, okay. And you're thinking, I got out of it. But it comes again. God, I thought I told you I can't handle it. He said, okay. But here it is again and again and again. Why? Because God wants you to know you can handle it. You can't handle it yourself, but with Christ. Come on. All things are possible. There's nothing you can't handle with God on your side. The word of God said, if God be for us, who could be against us? If God is on my side, what bully can beat me? Only time I lose is when I give in, when I give up, when I tap out. God doesn't have any tap out in him. He's never lost a battle, amen? Sometimes we find ourselves, I'm talking to Pastor Charles. He said, have you ever prayed a prayer to say, God, help me through this situation. God, show me a way out. And then God bring it to you and say, God, why me? <laughs> well, you prayed for it. Well, I didn't pray for this, God. You said you wanted to be stronger. Here's how you get stronger. You're going to have to pray your way through this. You're going to have to get on your face 
and trust God to deliver you out of this mess. Nothing you can do is going to set you free from this. You're going to have to trust God. You think about that. Now you say, oh, I'm going to be careful how I pray now. <laughs> but the reality is we need it. Because God wants to make us strong Christians. He doesn't want us to be weak that fall at every wind that blows our way. Every time the devil says, boo, we run off scared. Oh, we can't have no. I'm never going to church anymore. The devil scared me. He's a liar. And the truth is not in him. Jesus had had his disciples. He said to Thomas, who came to believe after touching him after the resurrection. He said, ye believe because ye have seen. A blessing. Oh, hallelujah. That's John 20 and 29. He said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. We don't have to see to know that God is real. We don't have to see to know that he has the power to save and to deliver. Peter, having heard these words repeated, ah, I love you, I love you, even though we've never seen him. That faith brings both salvation and a promise of a day when pain will end and perfect justice begin. There's going to be a day when Scott's no longer going to have to take those shots for the cancer. No longer have to take that radiation treatment. There's going to be a day when God's going to give us a glorified body. No more pain, no more suffering. There's going to be a day, no more grief, no more, no more pain, no more whining, no more crying. Oh, glorious day. Some people think that they would believe in Jesus. If they could see a definite sign or a miracle. But Jesus says we are blessed and we can believe without seeing. But I challenge you, we've already experienced miracles. It was a miracle that God saved us. It's a miracle that he's kept us. We've done so many things that by now we should have been long gone. But the mercy of God. We have all the proof we need in the words of the Bible and the testimony of believers. A physical appearance would not make Jesus any more real for us than he is right now. Come on, Sister Hicks. You think about it. Where are you at in your spiritual relationship right now? Well, I'm a babe in Christ. I just, I just accepted him as my Lord and Savior, so don't hold me accountable for too much. But you already know too much. You already know that God sent his son to die for you. And that Jesus went to hell to pay your debt, my debt. And because he was innocent, death and hell had no control over him. So he got up. When he came out, he says, I got the keys to hell, death, and the grave. Now, you get to choose. Do you want to follow him? Or you want to follow the devil who's already been defeated? The Bible has a lot of things telling us about rejoicing. But I want to close with this one. James. James chapter 1 verse 2 it reads, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. God wants you to know you're stronger than you think you are. You can do more than you think you can. Your faith is greater than you even understand. 
He says, because if you really believe, you could move mountains. If you really believe, you could pray and have a confidence that God is going to bring it to pass. Anybody believe like that? I just believe. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, rejoicing anyhow. This morning I preached, and it's, it's been lengthy, but God really wanted to get this word out that we got to be real. And sometimes that means getting up again, coming to an altar, and laying it all out before God. So with that in mind, the altars are open. Why don't you come? Have a little talk with Jesus. Lay it all down again. Lay it all out. God, I, I've been failing. Lord, I've been doubting. Lord, I've had questions. Things haven't been going my way. And yes, I've been complaining. I've been whining. I've been, I've been crying out. I've been actually acting out. I started doubting you. I started questioning my relationship. I started questioning, why am I even going to church? But you've never failed me, God. And so I do. I want to come back. And I want to reaffirm my walk with you, oh God. My faith, my trust is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. The altars are open. Some have come. What are you waiting for? Come on. Let's pray. God bless you. You saw me in my need. You paid the price for me. And through your love, I have been set free. Now I am not the same. You took my sin and shame. Forever I will bless your holy name. You saw me in my need. You paid the price for me. And through your love, I have been set free. Now I am not the same. You took my sin and shame. Forever I will bless your holy name. I adore you. I adore you. Lamb of God, my Savior, Prince of Peace. saw me in my need. You paid the price for me. And through your love, I have been set free. Now I am not the same. You took my sin and shame forever.
adore you, Jesus, you mean all the world to me. I adore you, Lord. Jesus, you mean all the world to me. I adore you, Lord. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though. Now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Jesus already told us in this world we'll have tribulation. But we are to be of good cheer anyhow, because God has already defeated the world. And anything that it has to throw our way, our God is good. He's faithful. I'm glad to know him as my Lord and my King. This morning, I'd like to do communion. I don't have a set schedule. God said, but as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of him. Sister, you and uh, Reverend Tensi will pass out the communion cups for me, please. As they're passing out the cups, I want to read some scriptures. The Lord's Supper is a sign of a, or a memorial of Christ already come, who by dying delivered us. And his death was in a special manner set forth in this ordinance that we would be reminded. The breaking of Christ's body as a sacrifice for us is therein brought to our remembrance by the breaking of the bread. And nothing can be more nourishing and satisfying to the soul than the doctrine of Christ making atonement for sin. The assurance of an interest in that atonement. Therefore, we do this in remembrance of what he did for us. And when he died for us and for the shedding of Christ's blood by which the atonement was made is represented in the cup. Again, these are powerful things and things that we shouldn't do lightly. But things that we should do in remembrance. And he says, and oft as we do it, do it in remembrance of him. Our God is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of us uh, doing things to remind us of his faithfulness. So as I always do, I want to take a moment for us to search our hearts. I like to take this time and say, God, if there be any wickedness in me, make it known, Lord. Because I don't want to do this unworthily. I want my heart to be right. I want my soul to be right. I want to be ready to receive this communion. I don't want to do it let it be a curse to me. But let it be a blessing to my soul. Let's pray. Let's meditate. Let's search our hearts. Oh, Lord, search the hearts and minds of this congregation. 
Make known unto us, God, those things left unconfessed and help us, Lord God, to bring it to you. Help us, God, to have a clean heart. Help us be ready to receive this communion with a pure heart and a pure mind. And God, let us be edified by this, God. Let us be reminded of the sacrifice and the love and the compassion. Let us be challenged, O oh God, to grow closer to you with a greater understanding of all that you've done and all that you're trying to accomplish in our lives. Let our living not be in vain. Oh, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24. When he had given thanks, he broke the bread. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead, break the bread. After the same manner, he took also the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you do eat this bread, and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let's drink. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this time together as a family here in your house. Another opportunity to partake of you and just your presence. Help us, Lord, to hide this message in our hearts and mind. Help us remember this, uh, this, this ceremony. This taking of the body and drinking of the blood of our Lord and Savior. Be mindful of what you've done for us. Let our lives be a reflection. We'll be careful and sure to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you is our prayer. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday. We'll see you tonight, 630. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for the pastor. You know, I'm going to have a prayer meeting for about 10 minutes if you'd like to stick around. In 10 minutes, we're going to pray for about 10 minutes, praying for the church and praying for each other. God bless you. So it'll be 1040, I mean 1240 we'll be praying.